What's up guys? So like we talked about in the video a couple weeks ago, since FTX collapsed, Kraken is now the lowest fee cryptocurrency exchange on the market. And this is mostly due to their super low transfer fee schedule, which is going to let you safely custody your coins in an offline cold storage wallet, like a cold card or a Ledger Nano S Plus. And so now since everyone is sort of catching on to how important self-custody is, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to automatically withdraw your funds from Kraken to a cold storage wallet, like a cold card or a Ledger Nano S Plus. And this will work every day or every week or every month or whatever your personal risk tolerance is. I'm not here to tell you how often you should be withdrawing from an exchange. I'm personally doing it once a week, but you can do it however often you want. So go down below and smash the like button for self custody and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, so the first thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna come to this Notion page that I've set up. I'll have the link to that down in the description. And the first thing you'll see here is you're gonna wanna download this Kraken layer.zip. This is basically going to allow us to use the Python import requests library up in AWS. So let's go ahead and download this and just save it to our desktops for now. Next, we're gonna head over to console.aws.amazon.com. If you're unfamiliar with AWS or why we use it in these cryptocurrency exchange automations. I have a video that I did a while ago on how we use AWS here on the channel. The bottom line is that for the features that we use on this channel, AWS is totally free and it is going to allow you to automate your purchases and withdrawals from these different cryptocurrency platforms. If you've done this with me before, you probably know exactly what to do, but for everyone else, the first thing we're going to do is click on Lambda. And if you don't see Lambda on your homepage, you can just go up to the search bar, search for Lambda, and click on Lambda here, it'll say run code without thinking about servers. Once that loads up, you're gonna go ahead down here to layers on the left-hand side, and then click on create a layer. And you can call this layer, Kraken layer, YouTube demo withdraws. And if you've already set up a Kraken layer because you've done the other video that we've talked about on this channel, you don't have to create a new layer. You can use the layer that you've already created for that previous Kraken automation. But if this is your first time that you're automating this, you are gonna need to create this layer. So we're gonna go ahead and click on upload a zip file. We're gonna go to our desktops and we're gonna upload that Kraken layer.zip that we just downloaded from Notion. We're gonna click on x86.64 and we're gonna click on Python 3.0. Ooh, is it Python 3.8? I don't remember. That's gonna be Python 3.8. So you're gonna come down here to runtime and you're going to click on Python 3.8 and then you'll come down here to create and just click on create. So now this layer has been successfully created so we can click back up to Lambda here on the hyperlink in the breadcrumb. And next we're going to go ahead and click on functions over here on the left. Next we'll go ahead and click on create function on the top right and we'll call our function withdraw from Kraken. And again, we'll click on Python 3.8 x86.64 and we'll go ahead and click on create function. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to click here on configuration and we'll scroll down and click on edit. And we're going to change the timeout to one minute and zero seconds. Oh geez, and zero seconds. So one minute and zero seconds here for the timeout and we're gonna click on save. Then if we come back to code, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on add a layer down here under layers. And we're going to add the custom layer that we just created. Mine was called Kraken Layer YouTube Demos and version one and we'll click on add. Next, we're going to come down into this body of the code here and just delete everything that's already there. And then we will come back to Notion. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the Notion page here, you'll see withdraw crypto from Kraken. And if you come down to the very bottom of the script, you'll see something here that says Kraken withdraw.py. And if you click on that, it will take you to GitHub where you can highlight all of the code here, do a copy and then do a command V to paste all of that code here into AWS. And so now you'll notice that it says changes not deployed. Every time you change your code here, you have to redeploy so that AWS has the latest version of your code. So we'll go ahead and click on deploy. So now that we've pasted all this code in here, we need to link this code to our actual Kraken accounts. And so the way that we do that is by giving it an API key from Kraken and an API secret from Kraken. So next let's go ahead and find out how to initialize our Kraken API keys. So the way we do that is if we come over here to Kraken and we click on our names up in the top right corner, we're going to click down into to security and we're going to click on API. Next, we can go ahead and click on add a key. We can call this key YouTube withdraw demo and we need it to be able to query funds and withdraw funds. And you can mess with some of the security settings here. I think the way to make this the safest would be to find out what the IP address of your AWS account is. I don't totally know how to do that. So if anyone does know how to do that, please go down below and leave a comment. But if you could IP whitelist your Kraken API calls to your AWS account, I think that that would make this a lot more secure. But for everyone else, let's just 
just go ahead and click on generate key. And then we'll give our two-factor authentication code here to create new API keys. So now it's going to be showing us our API key and our API secret. So let's go ahead and copy the API key and come back to the Lambda function and we'll find API key here. And we will just paste that right in the middle of the quotes. The whole thing should be green. And so now if we go back to Kraken, we will copy the private key, come back over to Kraken and paste this into API secret. And then we'll go ahead and deploy those changes again so that AWS has the latest version of our code. So if we come back to Kraken, we can go ahead and save our API keys. And now if we go back to Lambda functions, we can start to understand what this code is doing. These first two methods, get Kraken signature and Kraken request are basically allowing us to push API requests up to Kraken. This next method, get account balances, is finding out what the balance of our different accounts in Kraken is. So Bitcoin is an account, Ethereum is an account, ADA is an account. This is going to return the balance of all of those accounts. Next, there's get coin balance, which is going to give you the balance of a specific account. So if you wanted to balance your Bitcoin address or your Ethereum address or your ADA address, you could find out all of those things separately. Next, there's get withdraw info, which importantly, is going to give you the information about what the maximum withdraw amount is for your specific wallet on Kraken. So let's say you had one Bitcoin in your account, but half of the Bitcoin had just been deposited within the last day and it was deposited in US dollars. Those dollars hadn't settled yet. Your maximum withdrawable amount would be half a Bitcoin because obviously the other half hasn't settled yet and isn't ready for withdraw. So we're taking that information and then we're saying, let's go ahead and process a crypto withdraw for the maximum amount possible or whatever other static amount you've specified. So finally, if we come down here to line 69, we'll see some of the variables that we need to change for our specific use cases. So out of the box, I'm withdrawing XXBT, which is Kraken's way of saying Bitcoin. So if you're withdrawing Bitcoin, you need XXBT also. If you're withdrawing Ethereum, it's just ETH. If you're withdrawing ADA, it's just ADA. Bitcoin is the only one that's a little weird. It is called XXBT on Kraken. Next, which wallet do you want to withdraw to? My wallet is called Cold Card Mark IV. If you come back into your Kraken account, and you click on funding, and then you click on withdraw for your Bitcoin. You can click into withdraw addresses here and you'll see that I have two withdraw addresses. One is called cold card mark four and the other one is called treasure YouTube demo device. You're going to put the name that is showing up here. So either cold card mark four or treasure YouTube demo device or whatever your wallet is called. You're going to come over here into AWS and let's say it was the Trezor one, I would call this Trezor YouTube demo device. And just make sure that that matches exactly to the wallet that you're trying to withdraw to. Let's put it back to cold card mark four for now. And obviously if your address wasn't showing up here, you would click on add a new withdraw address and go through the process with Kraken of verifying that withdraw address and then put that name into your AWS script. The next line you need to pay attention to is down here on line 81, it's called max withdraw and it's setting the maximum amount that you can withdraw from your wallet. And basically on line 83, we're saying the amount that I want to withdraw is by default, the maximum amount that I'm able to withdraw from the exchange. So if instead you wanted to only withdraw half, you could do max withdraw over two, or a third max withdraw over three, or a quarter you could do max withdraw over four. Or if you wanted to withdraw a specific amount like 0.1 BTC, you could do that here. I'm going to leave it to max withdraw for now, and I'm going to redeploy my changes so that it picks up that I want max withdraw to be the amount that I'm withdrawing from my wallet. Next on line 86, we're going to process our crypto withdraw to the wallet address that we specified with the coin that we've specified. And then we're going to print the output onto the screen so that we can see it and hopefully debug if anything goes wrong. So that's basically all we have to do here. Next, let's go ahead and click on test. And the first time you click on test, you need to give it an event name. We'll just call it test and we'll come down here and click on save. So the first time you click test, nothing happens. You're just creating an event name. The second time you click on test is the time that this withdraw is going to process. So next, let's go ahead and come to our phones here. I have my cold card read only on my blue wallet. We can see that in our Kraken accounts, we have 0.002 Bitcoin, which is about $34 at the time of recording. So next let's come back here to AWS. Next, let's go ahead and click on test. And we'll see here that we are withdrawing XXBT. So Bitcoin, that is the limit that we can withdraw. And then here is the ref ID of our actual withdraw. So it looks like we'll be receiving this amount of Bitcoin. And this was our fee here. 0.00001 Bitcoin. So let's just keep refreshing our cold card until that shows up. Meanwhile, if we go back to Kraken, as soon as I went to the next page, you can see that the Bitcoin is gone and that a withdrawal is being processed for 
that 1.00199 Bitcoin, which is what we were seeing over here, right here in our AWS terminal. So that's it. We totally processed a withdrawal using AWS and our Kraken API. I'm going to show up on the screen here somewhere when that withdrawal finally processes to my cold card, just so that you can see that it finally settled in my offline cold storage wallet. Next, I'm going to show you how to automate this script and have it run every day or every week or every month or however often you want it to run. And we're going to do that using something called EventBridge here in AWS. So let's go ahead up to the search bar and click on event bridge. It's going to say serverless service for building event driven applications. The first thing we're going to do is click on this orange create rule button and we'll call this automatic Kraken withdraw. And for rule type down here, we're going to click on schedule and we'll click on continue in event bridge scheduler. For description, we can say maybe withdraw Bitcoin or whatever coin you chose from Kraken every week. Or if you want to do it every month or every day, you could do that as well. You can click on one time schedule if you only want to do this once. But if you want to do a recurring schedule, you can go ahead and click on recurring schedule. And if you just want to be very basic about this and get it over with, you can click on rate based schedule. And if you want it to run every one day, then you could have it run every one day. If you want it to run every seven days, you could do it every seven days. If you wanted it to be every 10 days, you could just put 10 days here. If you want to get a little bit more fine grain with it, you can come over to cron based schedule and I'll have links to popular cron expressions down in the description if you just want to use one of those. But basically we can build an expression here that lets us run our script really whenever we want to run it. So let's say if we had on the fifth minute of the 12th hour of the fourth day of the month, every single month, every single year, if you write a correct cron expression, it will show you the next 10 times that the expression will trigger. So you can see in this case, this one is going to trigger on the fourth day of January, the fourth day of February, the fourth day of March, etc, etc. If you wanted to do this every week, you could instead of saying day of the month, you could say every Wednesday. And now this is going to run on December 28th, January 4th, January 11th, January 18th, and so on and so forth. And so really, you can get as fancy as you want with this if you wanted it to run every Wednesday and Friday, you could do something like this. For now, I'm just going to click back on rate based schedule because I think this is going to be enough for most people. And I'm going to go ahead and click on seven days here. Be aware that when you do a rate based schedule, it's going to execute for the first time today when we finish the rule. And so the next time it executes will be seven days from today. So if you just tested it and you withdrew all the funds from your Kraken account and now there's no more money in there, it's going to try to do it again. There's no penalty for doing that. But then seven days from now, it's going to try to do it again. And so if there's no money in your account seven days from now, it's going to again withdraw nothing. If you've since funded your account again, it will withdraw whatever it can seven days from today. The last thing we need to fill in here if we do a rate based schedule is if we want it to do it within a 15 minute time window, depending on how strict a schedule we want it to be, we can select that strictness. I'm just going to leave it as off for now. But you could select 15 minutes or something if you wanted to. I don't think this really matters matters in the grand scheme of things. So let's just scroll down to the very bottom here and click on next. Next, we need to select the target. So let's scroll down and find AWS Lambda function and click on that. And then it's going to ask us which Lambda function do you want to evoke? And we're going to say the withdraw from Kraken Lambda function and we'll click on next. We can ignore pretty much all of these and just click on next. And then finally here at the bottom, we can click on create schedule. So it's going to have created our rule here. And so we can see if we click on schedule here, we can see that it's happening every seven days. And if we click on target, we can see that it's targeting the withdraw from Kraken Lambda function, which if we open that in a new tab here, it will take us back to the Lambda function that we wrote, and it will show us exactly what that is executing. One important note here that I didn't mention, please do not share your API key or API secret with anyone, or in this case, they will be able to withdraw funds on your behalf. And that's not something that you want, especially if they're able to add new withdraw addresses. So really make sure to keep these, you know, as safe as possible. Please also don't share them with me because if my Twitter account got hacked or something, then your API keys would be exposed. I'm also never going to ask you for your API keys. If someone does, that person is a scammer. So here in EventBridge, if you can't find the automation that we just created here in rules, it's going to be down under scheduler in schedules. So if we click down into schedules, we will see the automation that we just created here. And if you ever wanted to disable this automation, all you're going to do is click on the little checkbox here and click on the disable button here at the top. And once you clicked on disable, 
it's no longer going to be automatically doing those withdrawals every week or every month or however often you specified. And now you'll be totally back to normal. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you got stuck at any point, again, go down below and leave a comment or DM me on Twitter with whatever your specific issue was. Go down below and like the video if you found this helpful so that YouTube will share it around with other people so that we can all get our coins off of exchanges on an automated basis and save money on fees by using Kraken. Comment down below if there are any other automations you guys want to see with the Kraken API. Unfortunately, I don't see See an easy way to automate deposits right now, or at least there isn't one yet here in Texas. There might be one that's easily available within the app to all of you that are not in Texas that are able to do free ACHs right now on Kraken. So let me know down in the comments if that's something that's just working for everyone else. And if you want to send me screenshots or DMs of how that works currently, feel free to DM me on Twitter and I'll post those screenshots and a how-to tutorial up on the blog. In the meantime, if you do want a fully automated solution, definitely go check out the videos that I'll link up in the cards to the Gemini API and the Coinbase. Pro API, and then subscribe to the channel here for new videos every Monday and updates to the Coinbase API coming in January once they have sunset Coinbase Pro. If you do get stuck implementing this solution, feel free to DM me on Twitter. It's hard to debug some of these things over the YouTube comments, and it's easier to do on Twitter where we can share screenshots back and forth. And again, don't share your API keys with anyone, including me. Check out this video over here to automate all of your purchases with Kraken and get pretty close to a full service solution. I love you all. See you next week.